So, I've been learning how to use the Brookfield CD3 Texture Analyzer, and figured I'd do a quick demo and commentary on it. The first thing we ran into were some physical limits regarding the hardware. You can't change the load cell in it. Uh, when you buy the instrument, you're forever stuck with that force range that you bought. Uh, it's not very flexible, so if you ever want to test a different product, you might need to purchase another instrument. Uh, the, the probes have a 4-inch travel range meaning that it's pretty limited in terms of the fixtures you can use and the types of tests that you should be able to do. Uh, completely forget about conducting backward and forward extrusion tests. You just don't have the vertical, uh, the vertical travel range. This is generally a problem for testing any type of products, especially food, that, that come in their containers. Because whatever space is in the top of that container is, is wasted in travel range. Um, the probe is only three inches from the back wall as well. Um, you can't test products that don't fit. So any wide object such as a um, such as a pita pocket or a tortilla, you actually end up having to either cut them up before you test or fold them up against the back wall so you can still get the center. In terms of an operator's perspective, that's a that's a, that's a pain. Um, the instrument also doesn't come with calibration hooks or extenders when you buy it with the default rotary, rotary table option. Uh, this is this is pretty inconvenient when you go and you go and try and run tests. In terms of setting up a test, um, we found out that you you just can't calibrate the instrument at all. Um, if you were if you did buy the calibration hooks and you did have the weights on hand. You can go ahead and you can test and see how far it's off, but in the case that it is off, you're going to need to send it back to uh, Brookfield to get calibrated. Now, ASTM E4 requires calibration when instruments are moved, and this is an issue, and in, in this lack of calibration is a big issue in, in a lot of industries that need FDA approval, such as any medical, medical device, food, gel, or cosmetic companies. Um, so... I'm going to go ahead and, and set up a test here. Um, I'm just going to boot up the machine, first of all. So it's, it likes to do this uh, little auto-adjust to bring it back to the top when it's uh, booted up and reset, and after every test it's kind of gets annoying after a while. So, what I'm going to do here is... I probably can do a normal test. Yeah. Um, trigger force. Yeah, 10 grams is. Oh, no, that's a. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna do 10 grams here. Okay, 10 grams. Um, deformation. It's actually kind of funny because the machine allows you to set a deformation up to uh, 999. But anything above 101, which happens to be the, the distance the machine can travel, is ignored, and it uses the last test settings instead. Um, yeah, I'm going to do a 10 millimeter. Yeah, no, yeah, okay, 10 millimeter. Did that just default? Can I put it to zero? Yeah, that's it. Oh my god, okay. Uh, zero, zero. Okay, 10 gram trigger. Zero. Ah, oh, fuck, I said ten. Okay. Um, speed. Yeah, I'll just use ten millimeters a second. So I'm just gonna use these little <laughs> little balls I've got sitting around, just little foam globes. If I can get them. You go ahead and start the test, and yes, I've got the probe attached. Does a little auto fix it likes to do every time. Also, it's a little loud.
Okay. So, final log 155. Um, oh, remember to write down your test settings before you run a test. It doesn't like uh, like telling you those. Okay, so, but that just that just took too long to go up and down. Uh, that's, that's just a waste of my time. So, I'm going to change that. Um, normal. Oh, wait, hold on. No, that's 10. Yep, yep, yep. Um, okay. So of course the actual speed at which it, the the pre and post speed, here we go, aren't actually in the same window. Instead, yeah. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm nope. Nope. Okay. So I'm just gonna crank up the the up and down the you know the pre speed and post speed. Uh, it's gonna save my operator some time when we're in these tests. Oof. Yep. Okay. Um, yep. Same. Same tests. Remember, don't change them and always write them down. Okay. So I'm gonna run this test again. Give that a go. Yeah, I haven't moved my probe. Does this little auto focus? Auto auto fix again? I'm telling you, if, if time is is your main concern here, this this isn't a great choice. Um, let's see. Okay, so my last test was just over a hundred. Well, now it's to return to six seventy-five. Uh, according to the you know, the run screen, my test results for the, the my test settings were the same, but because I changed the pre-speed, um, I just came in at, at a farther distance. So that completely changed my results that it gave me. Um, I'm actually going to go back and set those back to what they used to be. Um, uh, yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, those, those, those are better at... That's returning some, <laughs> some, some different number than it should be here. One, yeah, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, normal, trigger, trigger, okay. So, as you can see, and I'm just going to run this test one more time just to see what it spits out. Yes, the probe's attached. Yes, it's going to go ahead and auto zero itself. Okay, let's see what we get this time. So that's not supposed to be. <laughs> so I, I I wouldn't. You know, I, yeah, let, let me do that again. That's yeah, that's not good. Is it? Did, oh, there we go. Hey, there we go. Four tests, and at least two of them are similar. <laughs> that's, that's not great odds, but could be worse, I guess. Um, so, I'm going to let this finish first of all. It'll finish sometime today. There we go. Okay. So... <laughs> Okay, I'm not a fan of the menu. It's just it, it just drives me insane. But it's not the it's not the fastest, not the most efficient. Um, the the actual run settings are pretty easy to mess up, um, so you got to be careful. I highly recommend both writing down what your test settings were, as well as your pre and post test speeds from the other page, um, and then recording your 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 final your final data. Because once you run a test again, uh, it just forgets the, the previous data. So there's, there's, before you plug in the software, which I'll go into in a later video, um, there's no way to save the different test results besides, you know, like pencil, I guess. But, I mean, that's great for a multi-thousand dollar <laughs> instrument. Um, 
So, moving on. Um, as you can see by how long it took to actually run the test, um, there's no way to move the probe up or down before or after tests, um, which tends to be a pretty big issue on thin objects. This includes paper, tortillas, breads, films. Um, you waste a lot of time just watching the probe travel. Um, there's also no way to memorize preset positions. Um, this is mainly an issue when we were testing gels. Uh, GM, GMIA requires that you test gels almost immediately after um, you take them out of the, the fridge, which or take them out of cold water, which I believe is 10 degrees Celsius water after 17 hours. Um, without using a pre-programmed start position, you're going to waste about 20, 30, 40 seconds of just travel time instrument just going through the air. Um, your gel's going to warm up and you're going to get some lower forces. But in addition, we noticed that uh, the instrument's also pretty bad, or <laughs> by, by bad I mean it can't do it, um, maintaining a target force. Um, this is mainly an issue for adhesives where you gotta you got to maintain a bond or form a bond with the product. And... It actually is to the point where this disqualifies the instrument um, for use in both like the adhesives and medical adhesive industries. So, in summary, um, this, this is the Brookfield CD3 is, is a pretty low end um, texture analyzer. You can't store positions, um, which tends to be a huge issue for testing items like gels and anything in a container. Um, you can't maintain a target force, which makes it pretty much useless for anybody dealing with adhesives, medical adhesives. Um, the small travel range being four inches and the distance between the probe and the back wall being three really limits the type and size of objects you can actually put in and test in the machine. Um, not being able to change the load cell in the instrument really limits the flexibility you have. Um, you know, if, if, you buy the, if you buy an instrument to test one thing and you don't mind waiting a while to do so, but if you ever wanted to use it for anything else, um, you better hope it, it, it fits in this, the, same, uh, the same range of, of uh, calibration or weights. Um, one of the biggest issues we found was, this is on our own testing, is that there's no, no great sense of self-calibration. You, you can't calibrate the instrument yourself. Um, if you, if you need to calibrate, the only people to do it is sending it back to, uh, to Brookfield. This is an issue for medical, medical device, food, gel, cosmetic, and a number of cosmetic and a, and a couple other industries that standards actually require the instruments being calibrated b before tests and after being moved. So, in all, I would have to advise not using this instrument in any FDA supervised industry. Um, the Brookfield CD3 is the definition of a low-budget texture analyzer. Um, compared to its competitors, it's half the price, but barely a tenth of the value in terms of flexibility, functionality, and for the most part in time, it, it, it has trouble meeting basic standards. So that's my review. I hope you watch the next one. I'm going to be taking a look at the software of the Brookfield CD3.